Amen. Good morning. Welcome to the journey at Fountain City United Methodist Church. Make some noise so they know you're here. Yeah. All right. We're going to start out with a song um, that's old. It's really old. Lauren's favorite. It's called Open the Eyes of My Heart. And I picked this song today because today is first day of Advent. We really need our eyes open, right? We're looking for the Savior. We're, we're longing for the Christ child. That's what the Advent season starts today. So here we go. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you. See you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. To see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy. Holy, holy To see you high and lifted up Shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love As we sing holy, holy, holy To see you high and lifted up Shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love As we sing holy, holy, holy Holy, holy Holy, 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 I want to see you. Holy, 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 you are holy, 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 you are holy, 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 I want to see you. Amen, amen. Hello, Seth. Hello, Mark. Good morning, everybody. I was going to introduce myself as Kristen and see if you guys noticed. <laughs> that was funnier in my head, I guess. <laughs> it was going to go like this. Hi, my name is Kristen Burkhardt. I like chopping wood and 
riding motorcycles and grilling meat. Good morning. <laughs> Give me some grace. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, we need grace, don't we? Um, but we're glad to be here, man. Hey, you know, Jesus has fun too, right? He's probably funnier than me, than me, but... Um, if this is your first time, welcome. My name is actually Seth Charles. I'm the ministry leader here at Celebrate Recovery North, which meets on Tuesday night. And everyone has an open invitation, so there's no reason not to show up, right? It's a great place. It's not, um, it's all inclusive. So if you've, if you live life, if your heart pumps, if oxygen comes through your lungs, you're welcome at Celebrate Recovery North. Um, a couple announcements that I would like to make. We have uh, come to Bethlehem, which Miss Donna's probably going to talk about. I hope she does. It's a beautiful thing. Um, there's a lot of preparation going into this, and it's on Sunday, December 6th from 6 to 8. And I think you can register online, correct? She'll talk about it. Okay. Um, also, we have a Christmas concert on December 20th. Uh, at 3 o'clock and Monday, December 21st at 7.30. And you can register for that online at fountaincityumc.org. We would love to have you join us for that. Um, but let's just take a moment to be in God's presence. Let's take a moment to open our eyes, open our hearts, open our minds, and invite God in here. Because um, I know you didn't come to hear me. I know you didn't come to sit in these wonderful cushiony chairs we all came for God, right? Let's, let's start with prayer. Heavenly Father, we just invite you in this place. We invite your spirit to fill this room. Uh, we just ask that all that we do here this morning may glorify you, that you may be our focus, that we may lift you up, and that you may open our eyes, and that you may open our hearts, and you may open our minds to your word and to your song. And this is Advent season, but Lord, we're always looking for Jesus. And so let that be our heart's focus, our eyes' focus, and our minds' focus this morning. We ask all this, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Mark, let's go back to worship. Let me get out of the way. Oh, Miss Donna's coming up. Okay, Miss Donna. Good morning. Yes, come to Bethlehem. Uh, we only have, as of this morning, 30 walk-in spots available. So if you want to, that means you couldn't necessarily pick your time. That time would have to be assigned to you. We have 170 people registered as of today. <laughs> And we are going to be socially distanced because everybody's going to be moving. And we have, this has been a blessing because our people are so creative. And Sunday School Classes has, has just taken charge of different stations and they're rolling with this. And um, so it's, it's our Bethlehem, it's our Christmas here. So if you want to get a walk-in spot... You can call the church office in the morning, and like I say, I, as of this morning, we only had 30 walk-in spots available. So, the other thing I want to mention is our Advent study. Uh, Pastor Kristen and I are doing this Advent study. It will be posted on Wednesdays on Facebook, on the Sisters of uh, Strength, the church Facebook, any anywhere you can get it. Uh, on our social media, but uh, it's Hope and Advent Journey by Olu Brown, and uh, so we have, we've started this, we, we started this this week, so the first one will be Wednesday, right? Okay, so I wanted to talk, just, just a quick minute when, I, I never really know what they want me to do here, because then I take the children away, you know, but I wanted to talk about children and Christmas and hope. When you ask children, as a, as a children's pastor, it really, you, you, you kind of hesitate sometimes to ask children 
questions because it reflects your teaching. And that's a little, that's a little scary sometimes. But you ask a five-year-old what hope means, and I had a five-year-old one time tell me, I said, what is hope to you? And he said, hope means that I get a snake, but my mama got me a goldfish. Okay. <laughs> But I had an 11-year-old one time that told me that hope, 11-year-olds, although we think, oh, my goodness, because their bodies are going through changes, their minds going through changes and all this kind of stuff, you know, you've experienced it. I mean, and so then what you do is, but sometimes they are so, so profound. And this 11-year-old who had just been, I, I thought he was going to kill me, but he said, these words came out of his mouth, hope is power. Hope is power. Hope is the power that Jesus Christ gives us, but hope is also the power that Satan can hold over us when he wants to kill our hope. When we don't have any hope, when we do not have any hope, Miss Donna, he said, and I was spellbound and said, who are you and where has Ronan gone? I could not believe these words came out of his mouth. But then when you think of that, that's exactly what hope is. Hope is power. The lack of hope is the door opening for Satan to get in our thoughts and in our hearts and in our minds. But the basis, and I know this isn't a, as I was thinking about this last night, this isn't a, an advent necessarily scripture, but everybody knows this scripture, and I want everybody to say it together, and I don't care what version you use, but we all know John three sixteen, and that's the hope, right, Seth? That is the power of the hope. On three, and this is what we do in children's ministry, so on three, we all start reciting to yourself, John three sixteen. One, in your preferred version, I'm an old King James person, but (laughs) one, two, three. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal or everlasting life. John 3, 16, that's our hope. Who powers your hope? Okay, kiddos, let's line up over here. Miss Chloe, you going with us? Yes. And Mr. Dawson, and I have Miss Chelsea over there. My goodness, we're going to teach them to death today. We only have three. Amen. Amen. Come and go with me to my father's house. Come and go with me to my father's house. And go with me to my father's house. Come and go with me to my I'm surprised you didn't. <laughs> All righty. All right, let's, uh, let's stand up for a good old o- little town of Bethlehem song, a little different version than you might be familiar with, but it's still the same words and it's still that uh, same longing for the Christ child. Oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see light above thy deep and dreamless sleep. The silent stars go by, yet in the Dark street shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. O oh, holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us to pray. Cast out our sins and enter, be born to us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel.
That is not the next song. The next song is really today. It really is, brings Advent home today. It's called O Come Emmanuel.
Amen. That's a hauntingly beautiful song, isn't it? All right, Mr. Seth. Let's try this again. I am Kristen Burkhart. I am the associate pastor here at... Oh, it didn't work again, huh? I just had to be me. Y'all going to have to put up with me. So we're lighting the candle of hope this morning. In this light, the Advent song, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, that the band just played, it perfectly represents the church's cry during this time. Let's recite the words there. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appears. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. While Israel would have sung the song in expectation of Christ's first coming, the church now sings the song in commemoration of that first coming and in expectation of the return of Christ. And so that's kind of the, the, where we're at this morning. Do you guys care if I just read something I Googled about Advent? Y'all Google, don't you? Often. <laughs> Maybe I Google more than you, but. Anyways, so I read this about um, Advent, and I think it's a great opening and description of, of where we are in the church in these days. And so it says, Advent symbolizes the present situation of the church in these last days, as, as spoken in Acts 2 and Hebrews 1. As God's people wait for the return of Christ in glory to, to perfect his eternal kingdom. The church is in a similar situation to Israel at the end of the Old Testament, in exile, waiting and hoping in prayerful expectation for the coming of the Messiah. Israel looked back to God's past gracious actions on their behalf in leading them out of Egypt 
in the Exodus. And on this basis, they called for God once again to act for them. In the same way, the church during Advent looks back upon Christ's coming in celebration, while at the same time looking forward in eager anticipation to the coming of Christ's kingdom when he returns for his people. I thought that was such a beautiful way of comparing the church today to Israel in this season of Advent, looking back at Christ's coming and looking forward at Christ's coming. And so this morning, I want us to all look back. I want us to look back with faith and see God's hand at work in our past. If you came here this morning and and you were looking for the ways that we're messing up and that this world is messing up, you're going to find the ways we're messing up. You're going to find the ways this world is messing up. If you woke up this morning and you had the attitude of, well, let me just figure out what's going to go wrong with today, you're going to find what's going wrong with today. And as we look back at this year and we look back at our lives, if we search for the mistakes in the past, we'll find them. That's what we'll find if we look for it. If we look back at 2020 and we focus on what went wrong, I would imagine the list would go on forever, right? But with all the uniqueness that this year has brought, and it's definitely been a unique year, I think it has revealed a lot. I think it has disclosed a lot. I think it's revealed a lot about who we are as the church. I think it's revealed and disclosed a lot about who we are as the church. It's easy to be the church when the struggle and the difficulties are normal, right? It's easy to go through life and be the church when everything is normal. It's easy to be a good Christian when life is normal. When we know what to expect, it's easy to be a good Christian. We know how to do that. But let something change in our lives. Let Let the church lose control of normal. Let life get difficult for a period. Or let life get difficult for a whole year. That's what we're in right now. Life has been difficult for a whole year. When COVID takes over, when the church closes again, when you lose your job, when you can't make ends meet, when you find out your spouse has been laid off, when you find out someone close to you, even a family member has passed away unexpectedly, when your family and your friends have abandoned you and you have nowhere to turn, when everything is piling up and you can't even see the light at the end of the tunnel, when tough times become the normal, instead of the now and then. That is when our faith is put to test. That is when our faith is revealed. 2020 has revealed our faith. That's when the majority of us reveal who we really are. That's the truth about the situation. When when 2020 hits, when struggles hit, when difficulties hit, that's when we reveal who we really are. How we respond when we're in the middle of a struggle or when we're in the middle of a crisis, reveals the deepness of our relationship with Christ. Can I get an amen? When when life is thrown at you, when you don't know what to do, when normal seems so far away, how you respond, how we respond as the church, reveals how deep our true relationship with Christ is. It reveals how deep our faith is. Because Sunday morning faith will not withstand 2020. Sunday morning faith will not withstand another year with the coronavirus. How we act in the middle of a struggle reveals how deep our faith is. And when we look back at our year, you may be able to see areas where your faith was lacking. You may be able to see areas where doubt outweighed the faith. And I'm not 
pointing fingers because without point one, three are pointing back at me. I'm guilty of that. But what we do when we look back is we get stuck on just seeing the pain and just seeing the suffering that we went through. And so this morning, I want to change that. I want you guys to go with me, okay? Come with me on this journey, pun intended. Come with me on this journey, and I want you to see where God has been present in 2020. I want you to see where God has been present in the abnormal times we've had. I want you to see where God has been present with us throughout our past, regardless of whether we recognized him in the struggle or not. I want you to see that God's love and his presence are constant and unchanging. As we grow and come to trust and believe in God's love and God's care, our view of everything will be transformed. Because I think in 2019, we said a lot of, yeah, I trust God, I know his love's there, and then we get tested, and it's like, where are you, God? Where are you? But as we grow and come to trust in that, our view is transformed. We'll be able to see our past as not just a waste. We'll be able to see this year as not just a waste. There's different layers to it if you think about the situations we've gone through. There's different layers to it. There's the experience we went through, which you can name that. You got the list in your head. You can name the experience. And you can call it for what it is. You can take it for surface level and say, yeah, church closed. You can say, I couldn't go into Chick-fil-A and sit down and eat my meal, which is at near the top of my list. But... I couldn't go to work, I got laid off, I couldn't pay the bills. You can look at the surface level struggle that we all went through. If you haven't been affected by 2020, you just came out of a cave this morning. Welcome to earth, welcome to real world, because we've all been affected by it. And my message is not about just talking about 2020 and Corona and COVID, I don't even wanna talk about that, but it's the reality of the test we're in it's the reality of the season we're in, looking to Christ for the answer, looking forward and looking back. And so there's the experience we went through, but below the experience we went through, below the struggle, there's the internal growth that came from it. Because I know you all went through a struggle, but guess what? You also growed from, grew from the struggle. You also grew from what we went through. There is an internal growth. What we go through should produce understanding, patience, wisdom, perseverance, strength. It should produce hope. Because by golly, I hope next year is better than this year. I hope that Christ comes in this church and moves. I hope that the burden is taken off of us and put on the yoke of Christ, I hope. And so beyond the struggle is the hope. And that's what should be produced out of the struggles we go through. When we look back at our lives, when we look back at our past, we should see that God cares for us. And I want you to see that God cares for you. Simply put, First Peter Chapter 5, verse 7 says, God cares for us. God cares for us. And looking back at our lives will prove it. There is pain, yes. There is loss, yes. There is grief. Did you know we're all grieving normal right now? We're all grieving normal. We're all grieving what used to be. But look for God's care in, in all of that. It's there. God's care is always there. Look for how he brought you through when all hope seemed lost. Because although I can stand here this morning and say, yes, I have hope, there's been periods where I had no hope. In my life, and if you don't know my story, I lived a lot of years in active addiction. And in that situation, there was no hope. Complete hopelessness. If you've never felt complete hopelessness, I never pray that on anybody. 
But when it seemed impossible, when the misery of the circumstance seemed to suffocate your faith, he brought us through it because he cares about us. When we look back, I want us to see that God understands what we go through. Sometimes it can feel so lonely in the struggle. Sometimes it can feel so isolating and so far from God. And we say, God, where are you? But I want you to understand that God knows what we go through. God knows what we go through. Does anybody know the shortest verse in the Bible? This side? Oh, it's not a test. I hope you didn't know. I'm going to tell you. It's John 11:35. Jesus wept. Jesus wept. Our Savior wept. So when you cry alone at home and you think there's no way, guess what? Jesus wept. He feels it. He understands the pain and suffering we go through. He came to earth in the flesh and experienced it with us. And so when we struggle, Jesus wept. We have to understand Hebrews 4, verse 14, puts it in better words than I could ever put it. Now that we know what we have, Jesus, this great high priest with ready access to God, let's not let it slip through our fingers. We don't have a priest who is out of touch with reality. He's been through weakness. He's been through testing. He has experienced it all except for the sin. So we think it's hard, but he experienced all of it, every bit of it with us. And the struggle you go through, he experiences it with you. Are you willing to accept and, and open your minds to understand that God knows your past and he understands your past? Are you willing to see that this morning? Are you willing to change your perspective this morning and see that, that Jesus is actually coming closer to us as opposed to moving further away from us. That's good news, y'all. Somebody give me something on that one. That he, in this year of, I don't know what's gonna happen, he's actually taking steps closer to us. Even though our doubt may be magnified, even though we may be blind to see his work, he says, no, I'm coming. Where you step, I step. He's coming with us. He's actually moving closer to us. So I pray you change your perspective that he is not further, he is closer. When we look back as the Israelites did and they look back how God brought them out of exile, we look back with faith and we see that God's grace for us is there. When we look back at our past, many of us could just say, man, I see how it should have been. I see what I deserved because I, I don't know about you, but my life has not been sinless by any means. And I probably deserved a lot, a lot worse than what I got. But we see with this new perspective, we actually see how God was pulling us towards him the whole time. He's pulling us towards him the whole time. Tim Keller, if you know who Tim Keller is, he's an author, pastor, pastor. Um, Anyways, he's a wise man. He says this, Certainly, we should be very active in seeking God. And Jesus himself called us to ask, seek, and knock in order to find him. Yet those who enter a relationship with God inevitably look back and recognize that God's grace had sought them out, breaking them open to new realities. And when I look back at my life, I know God's grace is what sought me out. Because left to me, I would just circle the drain of death. And it, and it would have been, it would have been darkness all the way. But God's grace sought me out. At, 
At Celebrate Recovery, we have these coins, these chips that we give out. If you've never seen one of these, well, show up on Tuesday night and you'll see them. These are miracle, these are miracle chips. And, and on, the, on the back of it, it says, this is what people pick up when they start the program of recovery or when they stop living the old life and step into a new life. And it, it says the verse 12, uh, 2 Corinthians 12, 9, which says, my grace is enough for you. And that's what we need to look at this morning is that his grace is enough. That scripture is true right now. It has always been true. It is sufficient. His grace is sufficient for 2020. His grace is sufficient for the rest of our lives. His grace is all that we need. Amen. That's all that we need. I always say, if you don't have it, if God hasn't given it to you, you don't need it. His grace is all that we need. So whatever you lost in 2020, whatever you gained, whatever you think you need, his grace is it. It's sufficient. It lasts. It's all we need. It's powerful. It defeats any bit of darkness. His grace is all that we need. I want you to look back as we change our transformation and we change our perspective. I want you to see that God has been transforming us through our struggles. You don't see the transformation. God has been transforming us. Here's the truth. Here is the truth. Because I think we get this confused. As the church, as Christians, we think, I, I choose to follow Christ so my life will be easier. I think we believe that, some of us. That is what a lot of churches and mainline Christianity talks about is to, Oh, you follow God and your life will be abundant. You will prosper. You will have this and all the things. Listen, God's aim for us has been for our transformation, not for our ease. Okay, so if we came into the relationship with Christ and thought it was going to be easy, we were mistaken. His aim for us is to, to be transformation. The trials and the struggles that he's brought us through have not been for our earthly comfort. They have been for our eternal preparation. We are in a preparation process. What are we preparing for? Well, Romans 8, 29 says that his goal is to make us like Jesus. And so as we're transformed, he's cutting away the dead branches. He's pruning us. He's shaking out what is not needed and, and what is left is all that we need. It's a transformation process. It's not gonna be easy. But we trust that he, he will fulfill his word and his work within us. Philippians 1.6, he began a good work within us and he will keep right on helping us grow in his grace until his task within us is finally finished on the day when Jesus Christ returns. And so we sit here this morning and we, we look for the return of Christ and, and, that, and in that return, we have to know that God is working in us and he's not gonna stop. Corona did not stop Christ's work in us, okay? You sat here in these chairs this morning because you know Christ is working. You came in this building because there is hope. If you show up, if you show up on, 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 online, you know there's hope. Otherwise, what's the point coming? There's no food. There's no coffee. I want to tell you something about this girl. I'm not going to tell you her name, but she comes on Tuesday night, and she's usually here on Sunday morning. And I'll let her tell her story, but she rides the bus here from downtown twice a week. She pays an Uber to get home, $12 every day. Tuesday she pays 12, Sunday she pays 12. $24 a week she pays to come to church. Come on, come on. But that pillow feels so good, I don't even want to get up. My kid's got a soccer game. I don't even, but she pays to come to church. 
There's transformation in that. There's hope in that. She knows that God's not done working in her, and she's going to pay to show up. Praise that spirit, man. I don't know too many of us to have that much tenacity for Christ, that, that much tenacity for God, that much want. When we look back with this new perspective, I want you to see that God has been leading us to Jesus the whole time. He's been leading us to Christ. Every detail of God's goodness has come through the blood of Jesus Christ. When we look back on the good things that have come our way, we have to remember that we have earned none of them. We've earned none of them. They come by Jesus or they don't come at all. Every good thing that has come in our lives has flowed from the cross. Family, his cross is the most vivid demonstration of love you have ever seen. We can't even imagine it. We can't describe it. I can't put it in, in my hands and tell you about it. But in, in this first week of Advent, we have hope and we have faith and we say, he did that for me. He did that for you. He did that for you. All the good that we have in our lives, we have got to give credit to the cross. It all flowed from the cross. It all came from Jesus. And sometimes it just takes stopping and looking back to see his work more perfectly and more clearly. Because in the moment, it's blurry. In the moment, it's confusing. In the moment, it takes tremendous amount of faith. But as we look back, we see, oh, yeah, I see God's hand in that. I see God's hand in that. I see where I changed there. He transformed me there. I get it now. I can see it. He's working, moving. We have to let God transform our perspective and deepen our faith so that looking back looks different. What does that new perspective look like? What if every time you look back in your past you saw, and you saw pain, you also saw purpose? Anybody ever suffered pain in this emotional, physical, life pain in this, in this room this morning? What if every time you look back you saw pain, but you also saw purpose in the pain? What is, if every time you look back to your past you saw scripture come into life? Because I've opened my Bible. It's not all beauty. What if you choose to see beauty from the ashes of your past? What if you choose to see joy instead of mourning over the weight of what you've been through? What if we choose to praise God instead of carrying the weight of our past? What if every time you look back at your life, you saw God working something out for good? What would that perspective be like? What if every time you look back, you were reminded that God has been with you always and that he will always be with you? What would that perspective look like? What would the Genesis 28 perspective look like? I am with you. I will protect you wherever you go. I will be with you constantly until I have finished giving you all that I am promising. What if we really believe that? Not here, but here. What if we believe that? I think we might look at this year a little differently. I think we might look at our past a little differently. What if every time you look back at your past, you saw God fulfilling his promise? What if every time you look back at your past, you saw hope for the future? Hmm. Worship team, you guys can come back up. We have to make a decision this morning. In, in Celebrate Recovery, we, we have to do a lot of things. And in step three, we have to make a decision. We have to make a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God. That's what the step three says. I made a decision to turn my life and my will over to the care of God.
And that's a big decision. That's a big decision. And this morning we have to make a decision. We have to make a decision that God is with us and he has always been with us. We have to make a decision to follow our faith or follow our fear. And and that's where we have a choice. God says, I'm not gonna force you to follow. I'm gonna give you the choice to follow by faith or you can follow your fear. We have to follow him or we have to follow this world. We have to follow our emotions or we have to follow him and his word and the truth. We have to decide to have hope for the future by seeing where God has been in our past. Family, waiting and wondering does not produce the change that we need to withstand this world. Waiting and wondering produces doubt. It produces discouragement that we can't afford to live with any longer. We have to decide now. We have to decide this morning. We can use the past as evidence of his protection and his provision over our lives. Our past is proof that neither life nor death can steal us from the righteous hand of Jesus. Our past is proof that there is hope for the future for those who believe The past is evidence that God is there. He has always been there and he will always be there. The past is proof that God led you to the chair you're sitting in this morning for a reason. Somebody came here for a reason. Somebody got led to this chair this morning for a reason. If you're in this room this morning, you're proof that your past is reason for hope for the future. And so whatever you came here for, whatever led you to the chair this morning, know that there's hope in Christ. Know that he is the only hope. Know that there is no hope in this world and there will not be hope in 2021 if we don't have Christ. And so however you choose to live, whatever you choose to follow, start this season by choosing to follow the hope that is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Oh, come, Emmanuel. Oh, come, Emmanuel. God, we know you're with us. We get, we get blurred, we get blinded by this world and the struggles we go through, but I pray that you transform our perspective, that you transform our vision. When we look at what we've gone through, I, I pray that we see you. I pray that our hearts are transformed, our minds are transformed, not from this world, but to you. And that this season may not be about commercialized world vision of Christmas but it may be about your son Jesus who was born and is coming back may we long for that may that be our desire may that be our want may that be our only hope Father we love you we thank you for your grace we thank you for your mercy and we thank you for Jesus and it is in his name that we pray Amen Thank you, Seth. We're going to do a Lauren Daigle song called Light of the World.
shout praise for peace on earth and she's calling out from a sea of hurt oh come oh come Emmanuel and can you send us off with this scripture um, and thank you for coming look thank you for being here um, this scripture changed my life and, and, and God's word tends to do that but I think if we leave with this and we keep this in our hearts and we keep this in our minds only God knows what can happen and it's 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9 and he says, Paul says, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. And so therefore I boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why for Christ's sake, I delight in my weaknesses in insults in hardships in persecutions and difficulties for when I am weak, he is made strong. And so this season, lean into him. Lean into his power. Don't lean into your own power because it's not sufficient. But his grace is sufficient. 
Go forward this week in his grace, in his mercy, and his hope. Amen. Love y'all.